All right, so we're working on a 1996 Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra 3100. Complaint is a check engine light. Pull the codes out of it, and we see that we have the PO336 trouble code, which is a 24X crank signal. It was simply unplugged, and no big deal, we fixed that, but what I wanna show is how to test the signal circuit for integrity had this sensor been bad to be confident that we absolutely need a sensor I want to walk through how to do a signal circuit integrity test so to do that the next thing we did pulled a wiring diagram and we're looking at the cam signal and you see our camshaft sorry crank signal 24x crank our crankshaft position signal is this light blue and black wire comes down and goes to the computer and it says 24x crank. So you can see on the wiring diagram, we have no idea the signal circuit design on this sensor. So what I wanna show you first is how to determine whether or not this Hall Effect crank signal is a pull up or pull down design. All right, so we're underneath the car and just to give you a little perspective of what we're looking at, uh, that's the oil filter right there. The crank, crank pulley is over to the left and the connector for the 24X crank signal is right there. And we have it unplugged. We're just basically simulating a bad sensor. And again, what we're trying to do is a signal circuit integrity test. So we have the connector unplugged. It's over here. We have the signal wire T-pinned and we're getting a voltage reading with it unplugged with the key on of 0.03. And so what we know about this circuit is the sensor generates the square wave, sends it to the computer in a pull-up fashion. This is a pull-up design hall effect. There is no voltage on the signal wire with it unplugged. If it was a pull-down design, there would be voltage on this wire. And so we need to know that because to do our bypass test, we need to know what polarity to connect our test light to to simulate what the cam signal, sorry, crank signal is going to do. This is a pull-up design, so our, our test light's gonna be connected to battery positive, and we're just adapted here to the starter BAT post, and our test light's connected to positive. Touch a test light on ground just to double check yourself, make sure the test light lights. You see the test light lights when we hit a ground. So our test light's connected to positive, and all we're going to do is touch that T-pin on and off. So go ahead and do that. And notice the test light is not lighting while we do that on and off. And as he's touching that on and off, you can see, okay, I do it rapidly. And I'm gonna switch this to a graph so we can see that a little bit better. And you see that we're making a square wave. Granted, it's not real, real clean. We're not worried about that too much. Go ahead and do it now. All right, we're simulating a signal. All right, so what we're gonna do is see the computer's response now. Back on the, on the scan tool, and what we've done is we've pulled up our 24X sensor RPM data, and you see it's frozen right now. I don't have the car running. It's no RPM, engine's off, key's on. One of the things about doing bypass tests that you need to realize, sometimes a data PID that you're trying to get to update or to do a bypass test, will not update unless the car is running. So one of the things we need to be concerned of if this test does not work is we might actually have to run the car to do it. But we're gonna try it with the key off, or sorry, key on, engine off, and see if it happens. So go ahead and touch that test light on and off that that T-pin. You can see the computer is clearly updating that signal even with the car not running. And so what we've just done with this test is we've confirmed signal circuit integrity. No opens, no shorts, Again, we're not worried about the power and ground on the sensor for this particular demo, just the signal circuit. So if you checked your power, you checked your ground, they were good, and you had no signal on the crank sensor, you could be confident that the wiring integrity is good just by simply putting a test light like we did, doing a bypass test, watching for the computer's response, and is very, very accurate and very quick. And uh, nice job, guys. Nice job. All right, just one final thought on this one, just to show you what this thing should look like under normal operation. We're plugged in, T-pin the signal wire, 
And uh, what I want to do is show you what the waveform actually looks like on this particular car. All right, go ahead and turn the key on. Start it. All right, you see we see a square wave here. The problem with this particular capture is uh, our time-based setting, which is one second. Uh, that's way too fat or way too too slow to see the actual square waves in here. Um, another interesting aspect is if you were using a digital multimeter on this waveform, you'd see 4.9 volts. You wouldn't think you had a square wave there at all. What that's doing is that's actually averaging this signal. So something else to keep in mind when you're doing this kind of testing. So drop our time base. That's our smallest scale on the graphing meter. Press no, no again, no again. Go down, uh, arrow to the left. Again, go to the scope, the lab scope. Yes, two channel, yes, good. And there's our square wave, and we're set on a five millisecond time base, so scroll to the right, and then change it to like 50 milliseconds, and we'll see a few pulses on the screen. There is your square wave that's occurring on this on this 24X crank signal. And, and you see the average again up top, 4.9 volts. If you're using a multimeter, that's what you would see. Pull up design. The sensor generates the square wave, sends it to the computer. Pull up design hall effect. Okay. So what I want to do finally is show you the signal at, at different loads. And if you were looking for a glitch or a dropout in this particular signal, um, changing RPMs would be important to view it at different ranges. So go ahead and raise the RPM. Let's watch what this looks like. Snap it a couple times. Very difficult to see any kind of glitch or dropout on this particular waveform. So what you could do, you can drop your time base and now do it. And that helps. You can see that a little bit better. But an even better method, good, an even better method using this kind of machine is to know that it's capabilities. So what we want to do is go back to our graphing meter and we're actually going to take that signal and what we're going to do is we're going to graph it as a frequency. And so what I'm looking at now is I'm looking at a frequency of this square wave. So go ahead and snap that, Bob. Good, you see on this kind of scale, what you're actually doing is you're graphing a min-max frequency. These scales are not voltage that you're looking at. Those are frequency numbers. And this is a very good uh, method of locating a glitch or dropout in a square wave in a digital signal is when you graph it. Go ahead and snap it. Keep snapping it. So it looks beautiful. You see it following RPM very, very smoothly. No glitches, no dropouts. Good. That's how you would test this signal for intermittence would be on this kind of scale. So I showed you the, the signature test, the voltage, the square wave, the frequency, graphing this, the frequency, and then how you find a glitch or a dropout using those modes.